One of my goals for my second year as a classroom teacher was to try and integrate technology into my lessons as best as I could to encourage student engagement and motivation. Um, I wanted to be able to support the curriculum goals and to build a deeper connection and understanding of the content in social studies specifically. Um, I found that the content was quite heavy. There were a lot of key details, dates, um, personalities that the students needed to remember and recall in order to, to even get a, what we call a level two. So to get reach proficiency or to get a level three, there was a lot of information, especially at the P4 level. So I wanted to find a way that students would be able to engage with the content and remember it in a fun, um, interactive way. So what I did was first research. All part of teaching for me and being a reflective practitioner is research. And I found out that there's this game called Roblox, which is an online platform with many different games uh, for students to interact with. Um, I found that that was a game that every student in my class was playing, including some of my family members. They play these games after school, on the weekend, and they can interact with their friends. And they create an avatar and a name. Um, they add their friends onto it, and they can even interact if they are on the game live. So what I did was play around with it, created my own um, avatar, and I found out that you can actually download a Roblox studio and you're basically creating the back end of the website platform. So I wanted to figure out a way to create um, a technology world um, for social studies. So I thought, okay, we're gonna go ahead and create an island. And on the island, we're gonna add all the key um, personalities in Bermuda's um, early settler history. We're gonna add the key dates in there. We're gonna put some questions in there and just make it an interactive game. Um, using a virtual approach. I wanted the students to have a chance to create and add to it. I wanted it to be interactive to use during the lesson. And I also wanted it to be a platform that they can access during their own free time. Using collaboration during the lessons, the students were able to um, kind of have a seamless um, approach to using the technology because they had already been familiar. Um, so collaborating what they already know and how to use it and then just adding the content to it. Um, this way I was avoiding the teacher kind of centric teaching and learning where I'm at the front, I'm clicking and pressing buttons and they kind of don't really have a voice or say. Um, I, I wanted to make sure it was more student led. Um, I also like the platform because it gave me a chance to collect information and record data. So if they answered any of the questions and completed some of the challenges, I would be able to see on my end, my back end, who answered the questions and how they did. So here we go. I'm going to just share what the homepage looks like um, for when the students log on or even myself. So I created an avatar and gave my name teacher, um, gave my avatar name teacher N, and then the students were able to, um, add me as a friend. Uh, this year I've started to do the same. And so I have one student already joined as a friend. Um, I would have had my whole class last year joined, and then they could select to play our class game. I did put a privacy blocker on it. So only the students who I accepted as a friend could actually have access to it. Um, so once they log on, they can click on the world and actually get um, a chance to explore it first. So this is what I would have done during my first few lessons. Once we started to read our textbooks about uh, the Bermuda early settlers and we were reading the Bermuda five centuries book and just noting down all the key dates and um, events that would have occurred. So here you have the world that I created that students would have been introduced to during one of our early lessons. So once we've gone through a few chapters of uh, Bermuda Five Centuries and they would be able to view it as my screen at first. So there you have my avatar in the center. And then we will be able to explore it ourselves. Now, because we had gone through the lesson and added things already, you do see a few of the key um, historical personalities there. So we've got Diego Ramirez, Christopher Columbus, Sir George Summers, Governor Richard Moore. There's a Portuguese castaway in the background there. Um, we've got some key items. So there's a garden there. 
the ships in the background. You can see the sea venture shipwrecked or run aground, which is some of the vocabulary students used. Um, there's a cedar tree further in the background, a couple other details. And scattered around this entire island, which represents Bermuda, are different objects and symbols, all of which the students pulled out of the textbook and made a mental note of, or even a physical note in their um, exercise books, which we then came back together to add to the world. Um, small details, including the kahal. So I had a student who mentioned we need to put a few kahals on the island. And I, of course, had to ask, and they needed to justify why. So they were able to explain that the kahals played an important role in our history because it scared away a lot of um, potential settlers because of the sounds that they would make at night. Um, and that was where the Bermuda got one of its nicknames, the Isle of Devils. So I used the platform in a creative way to get the students engaged and to kind of remember some of those key details. If they were able to verbally tell me, it meant that when it came to writing it down that they would be able to do the same um, and I could assess their understanding um, of the content. Little things such as um, paper or newspapers or even poems are scattered throughout and I believe this student um, wanted to put a poem because it represented the poet William Shakespeare, who whose play The Tempest was inspired by Bermuda's um, set, uh, settling, yes. So here on the island, um, there's Juan de Bermuda's, and I found it interesting when the students came back to the world and logged on the following week, because there were changes they wanted to make to the other group members' um, items. So for example, a student uh, said Juan de Bermudez never got on the island. Why is he on, why is he on the sand? And so I asked them to explain a little bit more to the group who had put him here. And they had said, well, Juan de Bermudez was the first to cite Bermuda. So of course, what does that mean to cite Bermuda? Well, that means that they, he saw it. He didn't actually get off of his ship onto Bermuda. Well, what did he do? Oh, he um, made a note of Bermuda's location on a map and continued on his journeys. So those are the kind of conversations that we were able to have based around the world here. Um, there was another day where a student wasn't um, in class or maybe it was an activity going on. They could have been sick and absent and they saw this hut <laughs> that had been built and a light bulb went off and you could just see their enthusiasm. We need this. We need forts in the back with cannons. Well, tell me, what is that fort? What's the name of the fort? Why do we have the fort? Who ordered the settlers to build the fort? So then we started getting conversations around the um, early governors, the first three governors, and, and just really pulling apart the content. Um, I believe this was to represent the cedar that, this, that the settlers, the castaways, would have used to build. Um, oh, and of course, the kids loved when this happened. So within the world, the mistakes happen. You fall in the water. Um, someone had mentioned putting a sea, a giant squid in the water to represent the monsters, um, which is where Bermuda got, again, the nickname. We have a garden here. So it got really creative. They wanted it to become more of a scavenger hunt of clues rather than labeling exactly what the item is or who the person was. So for example, here, I have a chance on my end to get rid of the name Diego Ramirez and to just leave the map. And of course there's a question. So once the students interact or click on the question, it, um, you can add text and talk about who that person was. So I think a student would have typed this in there. Um, we got to get out of here. And in order to get out of um, this, kind of location or being stuck in Bermuda, being stuck on the island, they needed to answer the question, the castaway needed to answer how to get out. And for this question, it was who who is Diego Ramirez? And we've got the map there to give them a clue. Um, and he, he drew a map of Bermuda. And we compared the maps from when he created it and the maps that we have today. Uh, so you kind of get the idea of how we use the world to kind of create a virtual notebook of content. Um, so yeah, that's just one example of how I use technology in the classroom. I was then able to use the student um, 
data when they answered the questions, whether it was a question on the game itself or in classroom, I was able to make a note, um, formative assessment with the content that they knew and also each student interaction with the text. So depending on their reading level, were they able to pull out the key details for us as a class to add to the um, collaborative world together. 